Hello, professor, host, and all the researchers in the conference. I'm your speaker, Jian Shuoji, from the Department of Biomedical Engineering, National Yangming Jiao Tong University. And my advisor is Professor Liu Chenyang. Today, my topic is real-time digital fringe projection measurement for detecting back shape in scoliosis. In this presentation, I will first introduce the references of this research, the principle of measurement, following by results and discussion, and finally, our conclusion. The research done by Himitolu shows the connection between children's scoliosis and radiation exposure. It is the main motivation of this research. The paper from Babe provides the knowledge of the impact caused by gamma correction, which we use later on. The picture on the left shows the distortion caused by gamma correction. As we can see, the blue and the red solid line has been pressed near the x-axis. The research done by Liu and Yen provides the techniques required for structural light scanning. The rest of the pictures are their results. Our system is simply composed of a CCD camera, a DLP projector, and a computer. The projector casts seven phase shifting fringes to the target. Then the camera captures the deformed fringe images. The images is then transformed into phase data. After unwrapping the phase data, the 3D surface of the target can be acquired. This is a general equation of light intensity we picked up in each image. The light intensity gathered by the camera is IK. The background light intensity is IB. The light intensity projected by the projector is IA. And theta stands for phase value. And alpha K stands for phase shifting value. Here we can see the seven fringe images. We can see that the patterns deformed along the surface of the target. Starting from 270 degrees with a 90 degrees phase shifting value, it goes all the way to minus 90 degrees. We designed this pattern to move sequentially from right to left during our experiment. The equations of the fringe patterns is shown in figure A. With half a pi of phase shifting value, we can combine and transform the intensity equation to phase equation. To reconstruct a 3D surface, the phase data needs to be unwrapped by adding or reducing several periods along each section. During this unwrapping sequence, our quality-guided path algorithm decides which pixel to unwrap first by evaluating their secondary phase differences and put the not-so-continuous pixels in the adjoining list. This algorithm helps us make sure that the unwrapped phase is smooth and continuous. Before actually get into measuring, we need to calibrate the camera by matrix transformation to remove the radial distortion caused by the imperfection of the lens curvature and the tangential distortion caused by the unparalleled of the lens and the image plane. We use the checkerboard in figure A as a reference plane and shoot multiple images in different angles for the calibration program. In figure B, you can see the program can simulate the position of the checkerboard and output the calibration equation. Here are the effects before and after the calibration. We can see that the barrel distortion is corrected and each line of the square is brought back to a straight line. This is a chart of real light intensity to light intensity shown on screen. 
we can see that the CRT monitors has a serious loss of light intensity. The gamma correction technology is invented for compensating this loss. And it is automatically pre-applied to the image file we saved. But when it comes to structured light measuring, the gamma correction in save files can cause trouble because the results depends on the linearity of light intensity. We can remove the gamma correction by using the gamma decoding fringe. As you can see, the higher the gamma value, the smoother the transition between the darkest and the brightest area of the fringe. Down below in this graph, when the gamma value is 1, which means without the gamma decoding fringe, the crest of the wave is resembled to a V-shape and the trough of the wave is resembled to a U-shape. With gamma value 1.8 and 2.2, the crest and the trough of the wave is similar to each other. The common method of evaluating scoliosis is to measure the Cobb angle. To get this angle, we must find the last distorted section of the vertebrae, one section in each curve, and draw horizontal lines along its end plates. The Cobb angle is the angle which two lines intersects. This method not only can apply on normal scoliosis, but also on kyphosis and lordosis. As for results, on the left side, figure A is the 3D surface of human back, in which we can see points of interest such as the inferior angle of the scapula, the spine. In figure B, we use the top angle method to obtain angles, which is 35 degrees in the thoracic area and 21 degrees in the lumbar area. The normal interval is between 20 to 45 degrees, therefore the results are rational. We also convert the results into a contour map and a height map for better view of data. On the right hand side, we have the bilateral symmetry map in which we can see the right hand side of the back is slightly lower than the left hand side. Figure B, C and D are back profiles along the left inferior angle of the scapula, the spine, and the right inferior angle of the scapula. We compare our results to the Intel 305 depth camera and plot the same maps. As you can see, the overall profile is clear and prominent. But the Cobb angles we obtain are irrational since it is measured from the same person without scoliosis. So unlike our system, this device can be used for overview, but not for evaluation. This research proposed a 7-step digital fringe projection measuring system for large objects. And the whole process can be performed at a speed of 1 second. And most importantly, no license or professional training is needed. Thank you for listening.